Okay, here I am again. I'm back with my round, funny looking tool. I'm using this on an RNF wooden uh, hot handle. It's called a wood burner. Um, and it's sold by um, RNF. You use it with a regulator. I believe Deborah has some of these uh, to show you how they work in the class. And I turn it up. Um, about a third of the way and that seems to be a reasonable heat. The rule of thumb is that if it starts to smoke you turn it down. Um, I've been using this one for a long time and I have one thing that I do with it um, and that is I make holes in wax without making a puddly mess. So this if you can see the side is uh, a thick hunk of wax that I brushed onto a wooden panel. I have also used recessed panels and poured in wax and sometimes it's colored wax. You can see that there's uh, colored wax on the bottom that's blue. It's not really showing up as blue very well uh, on the camera but that's what it is and then the top layer is pure medium um, so um, yeah so I what I do is I make a grid with lots of dots on it I don't know if you can see them but it's on a piece of graph paper and then I take a needle of some kind this time I used this thing, which is another hot tool that I use. It's just a point. And I poke holes in the wax. And then what I do is I take this and I make a little mark on the wax so I can tell where it goes, uh, putting this over the little mark that I've put on the wax. And now I've got a bigger mark and I just keep doing this, going down the line like this. And then what I'm going to do is this is a Viva paper towel that I've cut into a strip. And I use this to help me make the hole without making the puddly mess. So what I do is I put the paper towel over the hole. Okay, so I get it a little bit wet and then I go like this and it sucks up the wax. I don't know if you can see this, but you can see those little dots on the paper towel and that's where it sucked up the wax. And I just keep doing this a little bit at a time until I break through to the blue paint, which is underneath and then I have a neat and tidy hole. And here I have another one and I just keep going like this. And I keep going until, so I just keep repeating myself and repeating myself and repeating myself. I keep using these and using these. I'm going to turn this up a little bit because what happens as you use it is the wax sucks up the heat and it cools down so it doesn't work as well. So you kind of develop a sensitivity to how it works. And then you can go like this. So I make the mark, I put this on, and I just keep 
letting the wax wick into the paper towel um, until I get the proper hole. Now some people wonder why I use Vivas for this, but I don't use it for other things. And the reason why is because Vivas are pretty expensive, so I'm pretty particular about what I use them for. And the Vivas are way more absorbent than the Costco paper towels. And so this works out pretty well. You can see one of them, I actually was picking up some of the blue paint. So I just fold them up and cut them into strips. And then I keep going on and on and on and on and on, repeating myself over and over again. And this is another thing. Now, this process I developed by my favorite question that I pose to encaustic painters. And I want to encourage you to ask yourself this question time and time again. And that is, what will happen if I do this? Or what will happen if I do that? And so... If you do that, you will be amazed at the ideas that you can come up with. So, Deborah is also very innovative. And... Here. It comes another hole in the wax. So, where's this? So I'm just gonna show you. So, on this practice board, if you just go like this, well, this is pretty thin, but see, you can see that all it really does is puddle and it doesn't pull the wax out. But if you take the paper towel and you pull the wax out, then you're making a very clean hole. And this is going right down to the white surface of the practice board. These I made by stamping with a hot tool, which you can also do with this thing, which is just going like this. Picking it up and stamping it on. You don't want to hold it on there too long, but you can stamp a lot of dots this way. So that's just another quick little lesson on another thing you can do. And I'm going to show you one more trick, um, and I'll be back in a little bit to show you that.